Hello, friends. Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird with you live on September 29th. And the 2025 harvest moon is coming at last. The moon is back in the evening sky. It's waxing larger each day. And the harvest moon or full moon closest to the September equinox will fall one week from today on the night of October 6, 7. It's a bit late this year. The harvest moon usually comes in September, but this year's harvest moon will make up for it by being bigger and brighter than usual. And that's because the 2025 harvest moon is also a super moon. More about that coming up, but first I wanna mention that most of the images you're about to see are from our own wonderful Earth Sky community. We'd love to see your moon image too at this link. The moon is in a great place to observe this week. And now a big welcome to my friend Marcy Curran, who's going to tell us about tonight's waxing moon. That's the September 29th waxing moon, which is in a very special place. Hi, hey, everyone. Marcy. How are you today? Good. How's it going? Good. We've got awesome. some exciting moon action going on tonight. It's going to be smack in the middle of the teapot of Sagittarius. And you can see that looks like a, a earthly teapot. Pretty easy to pick out. And what's even more special is the spout of the teapot is pointing towards where the center of our Milky Way galaxy is located. Oh, the center of the galaxy. So if we look at the moon on September 29th, we're looking in the direction of the galaxy's center? Yes, that's right. Awesome. Let's look at this picture. And the arrow is pointing to the approximate location of the solar system. And we are located roughly about 28,000 light years away from the galactic center. And the beauty of looking towards the Milky Way, there's a ton of things to see in binoculars. You just pick them up and scan the sky and you can see all sorts of nebulae and star clusters. And it's a beautiful thing to see under a dark sky. Yes. And the moon is going to be lighting up that area on uh, September 29th. But what I love about it is just imagining myself in the galaxy. It's such a great time to do that. So it's like you can look at these kind of top down pictures like this and you don't right. get this that like you do when you're standing out there going, oh, my gosh, I'm looking toward the center of the galaxy. That is an amazing thought to think of just you're just staring so far off into space. So Marcy, let's talk about the Hunter's Moon. We promised folks we would get back to them on the Hunter's Moon question. Right. So what the happened Hunter's was, moon. yeah, you want to go ahead? You go ahead. Well, the Hunter's Moon is often usually going to be in the month of October. But of course, the Harvest Moon is dependent upon which full moon is closest to the September equinox. And then th this year, it actually falls on October 6th. So that's when our harvest moon will be this year. Thus, the hunter's moon gets shift shifted to November, which is going to be November 5th. So that's when our hunter's moon will be. Right. And so it was, it's was. it been confusing this year because uh, the wonderful website, Time and Date, which many, many people use, uh, to find out dates of astronomy events, uh, they had what, I don't want to call it a mistake because it's just folklore, right? So it's like, and it does change from time to time. Uh, we went to time and date and said, we don't understand why your information is saying that both the harvest moon and the hunter's moon are falling in October. And so they right. checked on that for us and they said, you're right. <laughs> that should not be the way it is. And I don't know if they've corrected that yet, but they are going to correct it. Yes. Uh, and also, I just want to mention that all the full moon, full moon do have different names associated with them. Uh, you know, you see the list of the optional names. So 
often like the hunter's harvest moon is going to be the most popular but every month does have a couple of different moon names full moon names that's right and so that uh you know let's say the rule again so the, the rule is that the harvest moon is the full moon closest to the September equinox, not necessarily before or after, but just wh whichever moon is closest to. And then right. what's the hunter's moon? The hunter's moon then is then would be the full moon after the harvest moon, which then since this month, right. is, this time is October, it shifts to November. Right. Okay. We got it straight. Marcy, thank you. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. We got it all worked out. So um, you will see the moon in your sky tonight and every night this week. And that is the moon that's waxing to full, finally to carry the name Harvest Moon on the night of October 6, 7. And then the Hunter's Moon will follow it uh, on the night of November 5th. So this full moon, the October full moon, will crest at 10.48 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Monday the 6th, and that's 3.48 UTC on October 7th. And you'll see a bright star uh, near the moon on the night of October 6, 7, and it really isn't a star, it's the planet Saturn, which reached its yearly opposition on September 21st. So opposition is the day that, ra that Earth was racing between the sun and Saturn, placing Saturn opposite the sun in our sky. And a full moon is also opposite the sun. So that's why Saturn and this harvest moon will appear close together in our sky. So watch for that bright golden point of light, Saturn on harvest moon night. And just know that when you see a full moon, any full moon, uh, you're seeing it because it's opposite the sun. So a full moon happens when we see the fully illuminated day side of the moon. And we have a full moon once a month usually. In fact, the word month comes from a root word meaning moon. All the full moons have names, uh, often more than one name, but harvest moon is more than just a name. And here's what's special about the harvest moon. The ecliptic is the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun. And that Earth-Sun plane translates to a line across our sky. Uh, the ecliptic is the path that the sun takes day after day and year after year as it crosses our sky. And the moon and planets also travel the same path because the major worlds in our solar system orbit on nearly the same plane as the Earth. And so you know how the sun travels high across the sky in summer, but low in winter? So you probably already have an intuitive sense that the angle of the ecliptic with your horizon can change. Every autumn, just after sunset, the ecliptic makes its narrowest angle with your horizon. And that fact causes a full or nearly full moon in autumn to rise close to the time of sunset for several nights in a row. On average, the moon rises about 50 minutes later from one night to the next, but around the harvest moon, it rises only about 20 to 25 minutes later. So during the autumn months, there's no long stretch of darkness between sunset and moonrise around the time of the full harvest moon. And in past centuries, before there were tractor lights, farmers relied on the bright moonlight just after sunset to help bring in the crops. And that's how the harvest moon got its name. But even today, some say that the harvest moon is bigger or yellower or brighter than other full moons. And in most years, that's not true. In most years, harvest moons are just ordinary full moons that rise close to the time of sunset for several evenings in a row. So maybe we just think that harvest moons are bigger and more colorful because we're more likely to see them 
near the horizon after sunset. This beautiful shot of a full harvest moon is from Kent Kirkley in Dallas. Thank you, Kent. And notice that the moon here looks extra big. The large size of all full moons near the horizon is a trick of the eye called the moon illusion. It happens with any full moon. There is a link in the post description to more about the moon illusion. And what about the color of the harvest moon? This harvest moon captured by our friend Mike Cohia in Rhode Island looks red, but all full moons look reddish when you see them near the horizon. When you see any sky object near a horizon, you're looking through more atmosphere than when the object is overhead. The atmosphere is what causes the red color. But <laughs> all that said, this harvest moon is special, and that's because it's a super moon that comes closest to Earth just 34 hours after the crest of the full moon on October 6 7. Uh, and because it's closer, a supermoon is bigger than an ordinary full moon. Photographers often show comparisons, like this one from our friend Peter Lowenstein in Zimbabwe. He is contrasting the year's biggest and smallest moons. Uh, thank you, Peter. But your eye probably can't detect the extra large size of a supermoon. And on the other hand, supermoons are brighter than average full moons. So I remember walking down my stairs in the middle of the night long ago on the night of a supermoon and looking out the window and being just blown away by how much the bright moonlight was illuminating the backyard. And I live in a city. So although you probably can't spot the large size of the October 6, 7, full super harvest moon in your sky, you can notice its extra brightness if you take a moment to look. And what's more, whether or not you notice uh, the size or the brightness of the super harvest moon on October 6, 7, Earth's oceans will feel this extra close moon's extra pull. So people who live on the coast will see especially high tides, sometimes called king tides or supermoon tides in the day or so following this full moon. And what else can I tell you about this 2025 harvest moon? The sky above us is so orderly in so many ways. And an October full moon might lie in front of Aries the Ram, that'll be the case in 2026, or it can also lie in front of Pisces the fish, as it will this year. You probably won't see the faint stars of Pisces in the moon's glare on October 6, 7, but it's fun to know they're there. And now for the Southern Hemisphere, full moon is a whole earth event. We all see the same moon, but just as winter and summer come at opposite times of the year for the Northern and Southern Hemispheres, so does the harvest moon. In the southern hemisphere now, there's a particularly long time between moon rises around the time of this October full moon. And their harvest moon happens in March or early April near the southern autumn equinox. So watch for the super harvest moon on October 6, 7, rising in the east at sunset a long time, alongside Saturn and then watch again the next night and the next, and you'll find the moon coming up not long after sunset, almost as if October is a month with several full moons. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. <laughs>